Hey, welcome back. My name is Tushan Sutish and I am your trainer for this Microsoft 365 Certified Security Administrator Associate Certification course. In this video, we're going to learn about information protection concepts. After this episode, you should be able to describe information protection and how Microsoft technologies can help protect your sensitive data. Describe how Microsoft information protection helps your organization meet standards and requirements through supporting classification methods for end users and describe how you can classify and help protect your sensitive content by using sensitivity labels. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Let's start by understanding the information protection life cycle. Data classification and protection are some of today's biggest challenges to information security. The first step of your information protection journey is knowing how your organization uses data. Not all data is created equal. Some data is more sensitive and requires a stronger level of protection and control than other types. The kinds of information that need protecting depends on your internal security requirements and compliance obligations. Because every organization may have different governance or compliance standards, it's important to allow customization of classification policies. So let's look at a journey of a file and discuss how Microsoft technologies can help protect the data within that file. First, let's talk about what happens when the file is created. Regardless of where the file is created, Sensitivity labeling in Office apps can enforce information protection based on the labels attached to the data. Second stage is when the user edits the file. The label is updated based on the user's changes and the content sensitivity. This ensures the file has the right protection. And the third stage is user shares the files with another user in the organization. As an additional layer of protection, Data loss prevention policies in Office 365 helps prevent the accidental or, or inadvertent sharing of sensitive documents and emails. The next stage is user opens the file on their phone. If a user receives and opens the data on a mobile device, Intune enforces protection of the data. In the last stage is user uploads the file to another cloud service such as a Dropbox. If a user uploads the data to another cloud for external sharing, services such as Microsoft Cloud App Security can apply policies based on the data's labels. Let's understand the digital estate. In many organizations, IT no longer has control of all aspects of its digital estate. Any number of vulnerabilities can pose a risk to the overall estate because IT can no longer draw perimeters around the organization. As documents and emails that contain sensitive data move inside and outside your organization, digital protection must go along with your data. The boundaries of protected data have progressed through these three main stages. First, on-premises. So in this phase, you have control over data within your network and your data protection is only as strong as your network and physical building security. The second perimeter is mobile and cloud. The advent of cloud assets and managed devices such as phones, tablets, and mobile laptops have expanded data boundaries. And mobile device management solutions help you control data, but not when it moves outside of your managed devices. The last perimeter is everywhere else. So you lose control of your data once it's shared outside of your environment. This can occur when a user copies a sensitive file into their USB drive to work on at home or perhaps sends the document to their personal email address. So now let's understand your classification journey. So start the classification journey with your most critical and sensitive data and work your way to the least sensitive data. So if you are unsure of your organization's data classification policies, contact your legal department. And usually they know the data classifications, visual markings, and rules for copying and sharing. Next, 
set basic automatic data classification rules and let users complement them. As users classify more files, the better you can expand and refine these automatic rules. Finally, associate the action of classifying data and files by adding visual markers and enhanced protection. For example, a file label classified would display a watermark of confidential and encrypt itself. So what are the four ways to classify data? When a user creates or views a document with information protection enabled, they see four data classification options. Automatic, recommended, classification, and user set. First, let's talk about automatic. In this instance, policies set by IT automatically classify and label documents according to the data they contain. And the policies automatically apply protection as well. And the user receives notifications of the automatic labeling. And the next type is recommended. In this classification, policies automatically classify and label documents according to the data they contain and user receives notification and can change the label as well based on their choice. The next type is reclassification. In this method, users can reclassify the data or remove the label. And the policy can optionally require users to provide a justification it is audit. And this type of reclassification is usually audited. And the last category is user set. In this scenario, users can manually classify the document and user classification determines which labels and protections automatically apply. All right, so that concludes this episode. In the next video, we're going to learn about governance and records management. So I will see you on the next one. Till then, take care.